Hey, Calvary by the Sea, what is going on? It's good to see you. This is Pastor Moses, pronouns he, him, and his, and just excited to be with you in this way. So some stuff that's happening, I just, I really wanted just to connect with you, to check in with you, and really to acknowledge a few people. Uh, firstly, just those who were at the family spiritual retreat at uh, Camp Hukulia this past weekend. I just want to say thank you for your support, for coming out and bringing your families with you and just being there. It was just a, a beautiful time. Uh, and I want to recognize our staff, our ministry team. I want to recognize Mieko Takata, and I want to recognize Grace Lee and Eric Hache, just their wonderful parts of service, their love for God, their love for you. So I'm just so thankful, um, and I want to recognize them for all the hard work they put in, the time to plan, to prepare. Uh, if you see them around, please thank them. It'd be awesome. Uh, that they know that they're loved and also appreciated. You know, some really cool stuff. I, I, I as well. I want to welcome someone uh, into our team. A couple of someone's into our team, uh, and I'm just excited to welcome Malachi, McSherry, and Alana Friedas into their uh, worship director and choir director roles. It is good. <laughs> it is really good to have them here uh, to be part of our community and to step into you know music and choir and choral ministries and just all that entails there so we're really excited about this and actually this sunday october 1st we're going to commission them we're going to pray for them into their new kind of roles and calling and just excited to have them and so if you want to be part of that please come on sunday we'll get to commission them and bless them as they start these roles i mean what a beautiful thing right that we get to include people um, and their gifts and their passions uh, i believe both alana and malachi will bring about a new fresh spirit uh, a new um, energy a new passion a new season and that's the beauty right that whenever we call someone into a role any role it's to call them into a new season. It's a new thing that is birthing, that is coming into being. So it is so good to have Alana and Malachi with us. All right. I mean, that's good news right there. October 8th, that is Indigenous Sunday, Indigenous Peoples Sunday. And, uh, you know, I got to acknowledge, right, the realities. The realities is that the American history of um, of its treatment of people of indigenous descent has been, by all accounts, horrific. By all accounts, genocide. That's what historians would, would agree to. And yet, here we are given this opportunity to once again create a space to bring about reconciliation between the American Christian Church and indigenous peoples. Uh, we just had some people from Nihau uh, sing for us, friends, family now, right, uh, of John Gaidos and um, Ainsley Halemanu, and they sang for us in their dialect, their Hawaiian dialect, and I, I was just reminded of how beautiful it is to be able to hear a different language, to be able to see a group of people who are now in an island of that is really isolated away, right, from outside visitors, and yet how to celebrate their songs and culture. And that's what Indigenous People Sunday is going to be about, is about celebrating the different indigenous groups of our, of our world and what they've done and their artistry and their engineering and their science and just their accomplishments. And at the same time, I think for the church, it's a call to lament the history. It's the it's a call to lament uh, the genocide. Um, you know, it, it's a call to be reminded that we're not so exceptional, right? Anyone who uh, is given freelance 
will most definitely be successful. <laughs> so um, let's be honest, right? Um, there is a history and this history is painful. And the church has a lot of work to do to reconcile it. And that's the beauty though, that here at Calvary by the Sea, we're attempting to reconcile that racial divide that we're here to try to build up unity, to bring about awareness. It's okay to lament, it's okay to repent, right? To change our way of thinking and to re recognize our mistakes and errors. But yet it is also our desire to create new systems. <laughs> new systems, amen. Just new systems that create unity where there can be reconciliation, where there can be unity. So please don't miss October 8th, Indigenous People Sunday. Uh, you all know my Indigenous background, my Indigenous background of Mayan descent. I've done a lot of reading, still learning, still growing, still trying to understand my Indigenous background, my ancestors. And what I continuously come up against is the injustice uh, perpetuated by um, colonizers, right? By um, some who took on a understanding that indigenous people were less than human, that somehow they did not bear the image of God on their face. And, and this is the call, right? To our uh, to white supremacy to 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 destroy white supremacy to bring down racism and to lift up uh, healing and reconciliation between racial groups. October eighth, Indigenous People Sunday, and then October twenty one, which is a Saturday, is going to be our Honolulu Pride Festival booth. And this is an event that happens here in Honolulu. We were part of it last year. And this year we're like stuck between, not stuck, we're in the middle between like, I think like a cookie place. And then on the other side, it's like a coffee place. So it's like, man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really fun. Um, please connect with Rhonda Littledale. She's overseeing Pride Connection. And, you know, if you haven't signed up yet, please sign up. There's a sign up sheet um, so that you can, uh, participate in that booth and there's like different time slots eventually here where where all of us can can serve at different times we're going to give away stuff we're just going to be there for the community and to show god's love we talked about reconciliation right another sad history to tell right how the church has treated the queer community how it's how the american christian church has treated people uh, who are are um, who have a who might be trans, uh, who might be gay, who might be lesbian? It's like you know there is so much room and so much need for that to be healed. And again, it's, it's a lamenting past, right? But by the way, this this past is not just a past; it's it's in the present. <laughs> uh, much like racism in the present right it hasn't gone anywhere it hasn't it's, it's no longer you know not something we see how often do we hear about people being killed I, exact words killed murdered because they are of a certain color or a certain ethnicity or of a certain race uh, or, or because they, they they are gay or because they're uh, for lgbt rights so yes it's a history but it's also a present thing right and as the church it should be our job, right? It should be our intentionality to create new systems, just systems that, that match the values of God for the world. So, Honolulu Pride Festival, October 21, we get to do that. We get to be a church that perpetuates God's love and grace in the world. We get to say enough of this discrimination, enough of this uh, othering, enough of this history that clearly has brought us to a point of uh, uh, that has been has been good. It has not been a good history, right? It taught us we should learn from our history, right? That if if we've been doing a certain thing a certain way for so long, that's only perpetuated hate and discrimination and separation. That it's probably time to consider something new, a new pathway. 
And you, how, how about we try inclusion? Mm. How about we try love? How about we try unity? How about we try grace? How about we try healing and reconciliation? How about we try confession? That's right. If you need to confess your sins, what you've said about people, what you thought about people, right? Like this is what it is, right? This is what the church should be about. It should be about repentance. Remember, repentance is rethinking, rethinking things. After I thought about it again, after I came to my senses, ah, I realized probably not a good thing to be a homophobic. Probably not a good thing to be a racist. Because it's incongruent with the teachings of Jesus Christ and it's incongruent with God's nature. And so people who want to go into four or five scriptures about something, it's like, well, what about the other 65,000 scriptures about those? Because there's so much more in there that talks about other things that we clearly are not talking about. Anyways, don't get me going. Don't get me going because it's it's gonna be sermon time tonight, you know, right now. So um just know that there's a lot of good things happening here at Calvary by the Sea that we are attempting to reconcile the race. We are trying to reconcile gender. We are trying to reconcile identity in the divine one. We are all made in the image of God. And so this is why I say to you, you are loved, you are welcome, you are safe and that God is well pleased with you. Have a terrific day wherever you are, whatever you're doing. May you feel God's love. May you feel God's grace smiling upon you today. Take care. All right. Peace out. Peace, peace, peace.